Have you ever tried to score 100 in Lighthouse with a real life application? And by real life, I mean uh, a serious, agile web product with a beautiful user experience that uses analytics, bug reporting, real-time communication with visitors, etc. Now, those of you who have tried optimizing the performance of such applications, you know how difficult of a challenge we are talking about. But how can that be? We have state-of-the-art frameworks, years of experience in automated build processes, but we cannot deliver user interfaces in a couple of seconds, consistently. <laughs> the funny thing is we can consistently maintain life in space. So I gotta ask, if a NASA flight director decided to develop web applications, how on earth would they approach this phenomenon, this complex problem? Last week, I had an opportunity to work with, a, with an incredibly talented team that maintains a fantastic web product. They wanted to know how they could reduce loading times that averaged around four seconds. Now, four seconds, that's not bad, right? But this team knows that every second has a meaning towards better experience and better conversion. Also, four seconds on our computers is more like 10 seconds or more on a feature phone. We were able to reduce that down to somewhere between one and two seconds by following a pattern similar to NASA's Mars mission plans. If you saw the movie The Martian or read the book, I think you'll find this scenario very familiar. So, the Mars mission plan involves lots of heavy equipment. Now we get a Mars descent vehicle for getting down to uh, Mars surface from the orbit. Then we have a habitat as a home and shelter for the astronauts, the rover for getting around and Mars ascent vehicle for getting back to the mothership in orbit. There is also the crew and don't forget their food supplies worth many months of survival. One spacecraft cannot possibly carry all this load just because it's incredibly heavy. At NASA, they recognize that some of the payload is more important, and that's obviously the crew. Everything else is shipped separately, or should I say, asynchronously. If we applied that thought process to the user interfaces on the web, the most precious of payload is the content we serve to our users. And it's the content that our users want to see first. In essence, it's the above the fold content or the content that's immediately visible without requiring any user interaction like scrolling or clicking on menus, typing, etc. So above the fold content are text and images that create the first impression and obviously, we all like to optimize for the first impression. Input field, but not the autocomplete functionality. Do you see the difference? Sidebar icon, but not the sidebar itself. It's just this beautiful little, looks like insignificant difference, but it makes all the difference. Above the fold content may extend a couple of hundred pixels beyond the visible area vertically just to play safe and you know, maybe even work with a little bit of buffer. But that's it. Everything under that border of our browser's visual area is virtually insignificant so we can deprioritize it. You know what else is subject to deprioritization? Every single analytics service, logging tools, bug catchers, and similar third-party scripts especially. Content is kink. In our case, content is the crew that we are sending on a space mission. It's a very important and sensitive mission. Content is why our users are reaching out to us. 
The above the fold content is what grabs their attention in the first place. Hold on to that thought for a minute. In JavaScript, we have two ways of importing code from other modules. We have static import statement and the dynamic import function. I'll try to keep this simple. The rule of thumb is this. If the module you are importing is absolutely essential for the above default content, or I like to say it, uh, application core, then use the import statement. If the code you are importing can be used a fraction of a second after above default content is rendered, then use the dynamic import function. It will create a code splitting point, and I know you know what this means, and this is the time to apply that knowledge. Everything the crew needs on their way to Mars is essential, and that's going to be static import, but everything that they don't absolutely depend on on that trip, everything they can use later should be sent asynchronously. Okay, pop quiz time! What do you use to import a bug tracker like Sentry? Anyone? Yes, you got it, it's the import function. If you want to import React or prop types, well, yeah, this is easy. Naturally, you're gonna use the static import function. But here's, a, here's something tricky. What do you use to import date functions or moment. Yeah. So I prefer using the dynamic import function. The disadvantage is that any function we import that way is going to be asynchronous and promise based. But the advantage, advantage is that we can use it only when the user actually needs it. Now, I understand that we have to use it asynchronously, but today we also have async await APIs that really help give it more of a synchronous look and feel. If you want to learn more about this pattern, then take a look at my video on loading apps in under three seconds on 3G. Most people will want to load Redux, Apollo, and GraphQL libraries using the static import statement. I mean, that's common sense, right? We really need to communicate with our server and we need to manage the state. I challenge you to rethink this pattern. Are there ways you can create an even smaller application core? Most of you are gonna say, and I can already hear it, no way, we absolutely need that Apollo thing. My app is going to be useful without it. And you're probably, you know, you're probably right. But some of you will know that you can show a little bit of your app, let's call it the shell, and keep users' attention engaged. Hey, I have a homework for you. What do you think you could dynamically load in your application that you're currently working on? It could be uh, third-party libraries or scripts. It could be parts of your existing applications, your own code. Now let me know, think about this, and post in the comments below. I would love to hear this from you. If this content is useful to you, if you liked it, it's going to be very easy to support our channel and our efforts. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel, and even better, Share the, vi the video with your friends and colleagues who enjoy making fast and beautiful user experiences on the web just like us. Thank you for sticking with me and I'll see you again.